The Reese Report with Al and Laura Reese. War in the Boardroom Introduction. Our latest book, War in the Boardroom, has an introduction which we call The Velvet Curtain. Now, out there in the world of business, there's management and there's marketing. But the way we see it, a velvet curtain has fallen between management on the one side, marketing on the other side. They don't see eye to eye. They don't see the reasons for marketing. They don't see the principles of marketing. And as a matter of fact, they don't stay on the job as long. On average, according to a recent survey, the chief executive officer held that position for 44 months. The chief financial officer held that position for 39 months. The chief information officer held the position for 36 months, but the chief marketing officer was on the job for just 26 months. Marketing is a long range proposition. You can't develop a marketing program that's gonna work overnight. It can take years, it can take decades before a marketing program bears fruit. Business we call the job of chief marketing officer, this job is radioactive, no question about it. And take Fortune magazine, you know, a management magazine, if there ever was one. For the 75th anniversary of Fortune magazine, they had a list of the 75 books that teach you everything you really need to know about business. Now, how many marketing books you think made the list of everything you really need to know about business? Actually, there were none. Apparently, marketing isn't one of those things you really need to know about business. And look at Jack Welch. Fortune called him the manager of the century. What does Jack Welch say about marketing? in his best-selling book winning? Almost nothing. Nothing. That's what he says about marketing. Now, Jack Welch's approach, according to his book winning, is you win with better products and better people. Our approach? Mm -mm. You win by creating better brands. Management is logical. To build the business, you expand the business. I mean, that's logical. Marketing is illogical. To build a brand, you contract the business. See, that's why management wants to expand. Marketing wants to contract. That's the difference. Hey, GM built a big business. In the last 10 years, they had 1.8 trillion in sales. But did GM build big brands? <laughs> Not according to Business Week. Every September, Business Week lists the top 100 global brands how many do you suppose were General Motors brands? You, could, you figure that one out. None. Zero. What's a Chevrolet? To take General Motors' leading brand? A Chevrolet is a large, small, expensive car or truck. What is that? I mean, that's nothing. Money alone is not enough to build a brand. In the last 10 years, General Motors spent $36 billion on advertising, $3.6 billion a year. Matter of fact, in six of those 10 years, General Motors was the largest advertiser in America. Money alone is not enough to build a brand. You need a focused message. What is Chevrolet's message? When you make everything under the same brand name, you can't have a focused message. So their message is an American revolution. What does that mean? They have a secret compartment under the front seat for an AK-47. Doesn't make any sense to a buyer. What's a Ford? Same problem. A large, small, cheap, expensive car or truck. And how about a Dodge? There's a pattern developing here. Of course, a large, small, cheap, expensive car or truck. Management continues once to expand the business when the way to build a brand is to go in exactly the opposite direction. You gotta narrow the focus so you stand for something. You've heard the excuses. I mean, it's too expensive to build cars and trucks in America. I mean, the unions, the health costs, the government regulations, you've heard all those excuses. And yet the most expensive country in the world to build anything is Germany. 
according to a recent survey, it costs 17 percent more to manufacture something in Germany than it does in America. And yet BMW, Mercedes, and Volkswagen seem to be doing okay, manufacturing many of their cars in the most expensive country in the world. It's not the cost that's driving General Motors into the ground. It's the fact they don't build brands. Now, the 50th most valuable brand in the world was Harley-Davidson. Harley-Davidson makes motorcycles in America. How come Harley-Davidson does particularly well and General Motors does not? Well, Harley and Harley-Davidson is profitable. In the last 10 years, Harley has had sales of over $46 billion, net profits of $6.9 billion, or a net profit margin of 14.9%. That's almost five, three times as much as the average Fortune 500 company. What's a Harley-Davidson? Well, look at the name of the owner's group. Harley Owner's Group, H-O-G, Hog. They make big, heavy-duty motorcycles, and that's all they make. When the lightweight Japanese bikes hit the shores, Harley ignored them. That's not the kind of bikes they make. When fashion bikes like Ducati from Italy hit America, Harley ignored them. That's not the kind of bikes they focus on. Harley dominates its market. And this is a key attribute of building a powerful brand. You have to dominate your market or you're going to have problems. 46% of the heavy-duty bike market is owned by Harley-Davidson, 46%. Strong brands are brands that dominate their markets. Tabasco has 90% of the pepper sauce market. Campbell's Soup has 82% of the canned condensed soup market. WD-40 is 82% of the slippery market, or whatever you call that. Gatorade is 81% of the soft drink, sports drink market. TurboTax has 79% of the income tax software market. Starbucks has 73% of the high-end coffee market. And Taco Bell has 70% of the fast food Mexican market. These are all strong brands. Now, the only U.S. automobile brand in the top 100 global brands are Ford at 49. What's the difference between Ford and General Motors? I'll tell you the difference. Ford has a leadership position in light trucks. General Motors brands, eight of them, don't lead in anything. If your brand is not a leading brand in general, you're going to have trouble, especially when we have a financial crisis. Lexus leads in luxury vehicles. Lexus, BMW, and Mercedes outsell Cadillac four and a half to one. Cadillac used to be the dominant the dominant high-end luxury automobile brand in America, no more. They don't focus on high-end luxury automobile brands. They introduce a lot of cheap models of Cadillac vehicles. Toyota leads in cars. Toyota outsells Chevrolet by 35%. Look at Toyota versus Chevrolet. It's a little like Heinz versus Hunts. I mean, Toyota is Heinz. Chevrolet is Hunts. Toyotas are more expensive than Chevrolet. Heinz is more expensive than Hunts. $2.51 versus $2.19 at my local supermarket. And also, Toyota outsells Chevrolet. Heinz has 60% of the market. Hunts has 30% of the market. It is very, very difficult to make money when you don't dominate a market and when you have to sell for less than the leading brand. Chevrolet, compared to Toyota, is a burned out brand. This is Al Reese, and that was the Reese Report.